The Rui is a Chinese ceremonial scepter symbolizing power and good fortune. Ruiz became luxurious symbols of wealth and political power throughout the many Chinese dynasties, as well as ornaments of the word Rui means satisfied or pleasing. During the Han Dynasty, emperors and nobles would hold a Rui while talking, so it became known as a Tan Bing or talking baton. During the Ming and Qing Dynasties, it was given as a gift to emperors during important court celebrations such as weddings and birthdays. The origin of the Rui has baffled anthropologists. One theory is that they originated as bag scratchers for the powerful in early China. The head of Linus's Rui was carved from jade and repurposed as a lid of a decorative box. The carved center image signifies longevity in Chinese. The pattern around the outer edge of the Rui is known as Hui Wen or Meander, representing cycles and rebirth. Jade has been treasured in China for centuries and is regarded as one of its most valuable and precious gems. Known as the Stone of Heaven, jade was used as a medium to connect heaven and earth in rituals and also ward off evil. There is a Chinese proverb that says, gold has a price, jade is priceless. The grand masters of fine art weren't always so grand. There was a time when they were unknowns, just waiting to be discovered. Doing the discovering is an art form all its own. The world's ultimate collector may have been Julie's great aunt, Louisine Havemeyer. She has the vision. She has the foresight. She has the money. Louisine is married to sugar magnate H.O. Havemeyer. Together, they travel the globe searching for art they can believe in. But how to know which painters to go for? Being brilliant and wealthy isn't enough. Louisine needs advice. For that, she looks to a superstar artist in her own right, her BFF, Mary Cassatt. Together, they dip into the family fortune. On Goya, Cezanne, and Degas, on Rembrandt and Renoir, Monet, and Manet. Havemeyer and Cassatt introduced the world to the greats. Cassatt would go on to do stunning portraits of Havemeyer herself, and Louisine would become a firebrand in the suffrage movement. Living that full a life? There's an art to that. For almost 2,000 years, it has recorded our laws, our science, our passion, our lives. Paper is the great vault of human history. It's what's made ideas eternal, but also ethereal. Paper disappears before our eyes. First, there was stone, paintings in caves, carvings on temple walls. 5,000 years ago came papyrus, on sheets of woven sedge plants, the pharaohs left their legacy. Over 2,000 years ago, hides were dried to make parchment. It could take 200 animals to make a single book. Around the same time, the Chinese coined something new. Plant fibers distilled in water are scooped onto a screen, then dried in a layer. Paper is born. The Catholic Church shuns it believing it's not as worthy of the sacred word as animal parchment. It would take another 500 years before paper in Europe catches on with the printing press. The rest is history, literally. Paper that's manufactured might last only 50 years. But then, do we still need paper? So long as we value our past, the answer is yes. Edison has over a thousand U.S. patents. Shunpei Yamazaki, a computer scientist, has more than five times that many. All told, America has granted 10 million patents so far. The prize for the world's greatest invention? That goes to the lawmakers of Sybaris, 
2,500 years ago. They came up with the idea of protecting ideas. In their case, to allow local chefs the claim to any dish they'd invented. Without patents, where would we be? Without table salt, courtesy of a process coined in 1641 by Samuel Winslow, the American colony's first patent holder. Without fertilizer, a new approach to making an ingredient became the first patent of the United States, granted to Samuel Hopkins in 1790. Without a way to lift boats over sandbars, a patent granted to a young inventor named Abraham Lincoln, the only president to have one. Patents, he said, add the fuel of interest to the fire of genius. In 1845, patent law is new when a storied firm opens up shop, Munn & Company. Three generations of Julie's ancestors would turn hundreds of thousands of dreams into reality. It takes genius to develop an idea. It takes a patent for an idea to take flight.